Hey there guys, welcome to the video. My name is Pushpinder Gill and in this video we're going to be talking about conditional probability. So before we get started, this would be our website ad address. Don't forget to explore more about us on perfect-scores.com and this would be our Facebook page to give us your valuable like that is facebook.com slash perfect scores. So let's go ahead and get started on conditional probability. Now, how is it different from the normal probability that actually we uh, we have done till now? So I'm going to start with a, a simple example here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, let's say we are tossing three coins. So three coins are tossed and I talk about two events that actually can happen. So first event is event A in which I say, let's say at least two tails appear so I say at least two tails appear and uh, in next event that I'll, I would like to define would be let's say that uh, you know first coin is a head right so the first coin shows head so if if at least two tails should appear then you know what are going to be my what is going to be my sample space my sample space is going to be I can get uh, at least two tails should appear I can get two tails and uh, one head I can get uh, you know first tail then head and then tail I can get first head and then two tails or I can get all three tails uh, that will also be you know that will also be considered as at least two tails because the word at least is there and the next is that first coin shows head so if the first coin shows head then you know it can be head 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 or it can be head head tail or it can be head tail tail or it can be head tail head you know just kind of a different variation of this here so these are the four cases that actually match event b and i let's say uh, I, I you know i define that event a and event b uh, you know, they, they're happening simultaneously. You know, I'm just checking them simultaneously. Uh, none of the event is happening before one event. I do not have any idea about that. So then what is going to be the probability that event A occurs and event B occurs? That would be equal to uh, one of the common cases from A and one of the common cases from B that we can clearly see that just this case is common to both the cases. You can clearly see TTH is not there. THT is also not there and TTT is also not there. So there is just one case that is probability of a head, tail and tail happening which will actually say that probability of event A occurring and probability of event B occurring. That would be equal to uh, probability of getting a head uh, plus probability of getting a tail plus probability of you know sorry into I'm sorry probability of getting a head into probability of getting a tail into probability of getting a tail which would be 1 by 2 into 1 by 2 into 1 by 2 that will actually be equal to 1 by 8. So in this case in a normal case when I talked about probability that both the events occur. Now if I look observe at this 1 by 8 what is this 1 by 8? Uh, 8 are the total number of cases you can clearly see the total number of cases there are total number of cases 8 because when you toss 3 coins all you get is eight cases because uh, you know you get two cube cases that is you get eight cases and one is the favorable case that you have that is HTT to both the events but what happens when I put a condition on it let's suppose if I say what is the probability of event B occurring right so let's suppose if I say what is the prop so let, sorry what's the probability of event A occurring such that event B has already occurred. Let me repeat that phrase again. I'm asking you this question now that what is the probability of event A occurring provided that event B has already occurred. Now what will happen? My favorable case is going to be just one because you know I have this head tail tail and head tail tail as my favorable case. But what about my total number of cases? Now I already know that event B has already occurred. These eight cases will no longer be valid and only these four cases are going to be there which means the probability that event A occurs such that B has already occurred would be equal to 1 divided by these 4 that is 1 by 4. 
that means when i talk about conditional probability when i talk about conditional probability one of the events have already occurred and that events sample space will actually become the total number of events for the whole question right so i suppose you're understanding what i'm trying to say here and it is denoted so you know just have to say how this uh, conditional probability is denoted how will i say what is p of a by b so what is p of a by b p of a by b is probability of event a occurring so that is probability of event a occurring such that such that prob that event b has already occurred so event b has already occurred right so that is uh you know the denoted by p of a by b that is probability of event a occurring such that event b has already occurred then what is going to be this probability so that is going to be so probability of a dash b would be equal to the number of ways the number of ways in which event a occurs and event b occurs right because event b has already occurred you cannot look at a sample space now you will have to come out with the number of cases in which event a has also occurred and event b has also occurred divided by the total number of ways in which event b occurs because event b becomes your sample space as you can clearly see in this previous question here this was the number of ways in which a can also occur and b can also occur because b has already occurred that means this case and this case and this case are not going to be part of our sample space it's just this case which is going to be as part of our sample space that is why i have written 1 here and divided by 4 which means this is now officially our sample space because event b has already occurred so this is the probability of event a occurring such that event b also occurring uh b has already occurred now if i say you know if i divide by the total number of events let's suppose the number of ways in which the whole sample space can occur divided by the number of ways in which the whole sample space can occur as you can clearly see this expression over here would be equal to probability that event a occurs and b occurs divided by this would be that the probability event b occurs so the conditional probability is defined as so the conditional probability says that a occurs provided that b has already occurred would be equal to probability of a intersection b that probability of both the events occurring into divided by the probability of event b occurring right uh, so i suppose you are understanding my point over here and one more thing that you have to take care is uh make sure that the probability of event b occurring is not equal to 0 because if this is equal to 0 then this probability would be infinite which would be a problem right so that is there and uh, and one more thing that you know b should not be an empty set right it should not be an empty set uh because then you know probability of a intersection b would be just equal to probability of a then this formula there would not be any need of that right so i suppose you're understanding this over here let's go ahead and solve a question so that it becomes more clear to you okay so there you go so this a question we have so the question says that a family has two children what is the probability that both the children are girls given them at least one of them is a girl so we have two events here uh you know we have two events that is two children uh event a that is the first child first child and event b that is the second child and the question says that at least one of them is definitely a girl right so at least one of them is definitely a girl so one of them is is definitely definitely a girl and what is my sample space here my sample space is that you can either get two boys or you can either get first one as boy and second one as girl you can either get the first one as girl and second one as boy or you can either get both as girls and we have two events here what are the two events uh the two events are both the children are girls and at least one of them is a girl so what is the probability so let's suppose i say this event is uh, you know it's denoted by let's say r and this event is denoted by s so what is the probability of event r occurring that is what is the probability that at least 
one of them is a girl right so what is the probability that at least one of them is a girl so that would actually be this case this case and this case so that probability will actually be equal to 3 by 4 right and what is the probability of event us s occurring so what is the probability that both are girls so that's just one case here which is 1 by 4 and we have to find what is the probability such that both the children are girls given them at least one of them is a girl that means event r has already happened and i want to find the probability of event s occurring so i repeat that again the question is asking us that what is the probability such that event s occurs provided that r has already occurred Right? So that would be equal to probability of S and R occurring together divided by the probability of R occurring. Right? So what is the probability of S and R occurring together? That is uh, probability such that both of them are girls and probability such that at least one of them is a girl. That will actually be equal to 1 by 4. Why 1 by 4? Because this is the only case which caters to this event also and this event also. So that is 1 by 4 divided by the probability of event R occurring. So what is the probability of event R occurring? That is 3 by 4. So my answer over here is actually going to be equal to 1 by 3. That is the probability that both the children are girls given them at least one of them is a girl. You can do it a little logically as well. You can do this question a little logically. That is, uh, you know, you have these four events. Either both are boys or one is boy, one is girl, or one is girl, one is boy, or both are girls. So the question is asking that at least one of them is a girl has already happened. So these are your three favorable cases which are there. This event is totally gone. Now out of there, what is the probability that both are girls? That is one case divided by those three cases. So that will be the way, you know, if this is actually, uh, let's say, uh, you know, a multiple choice question. And that will be the way if, you know, this is, uh, you know, subjective question, you know, asking you, giving, giving you marks for, uh, you know, your steps as well. So suppose you're understanding this point here, guys. Uh, let's move on. Let's do one more question here. So the question says that one card is drawn randomly from 10 cards from number 1 to 10. Now the first thing that you have to do is, is try to identify events in the question. So the question says that if it is known that number uh, that the number number on the drawn card is more than 3. So there is one event that is number on the drawn card is more than 3. Let's say this event is event A. So what is the probability that event A occurs? That is what is the probability that the number drawn on the card is more than 3. So that number can any be 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 and 10. So that will be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So that would be equal to 7 by 10. Right? And what is the probability that it is an even number? So the question is asking us what is the probability that it is an even number? So let's say this is event B. So what is the probability of getting an even number? So that will be 2, 4, 6, 8 and 10. So that will be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So that would be equal to 5 by 10. And what is the probability that event A occurs and event B occurs? So that would be what is the probability that the number is more than 3 and the number is even. So that would be only these numbers. That will be 1, 2, 3, 4 which is 4 by 10. Now the question is asking, it is already known that event B has occurred, right? So it is already known that, sorry, event A has occurred, that the number of, number in the drawn card is more than 3. So event A has already occurred and we are supposed to find what is the probability that event B is going to occur. So that would be equal to probability of A and B occurring both divided by the probability of event A occurring. So that would be equal to 4 by 10 divided by 7 by 10, which would be equal to 4 by 7. So suppose you're understanding this point over here, guys, that probability of event B occurring such that event A has already occurred is going to be this. I don't want you to cram this formula. I want you to understand it logically. Understand this logically. You have these numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10. The question says that event A has already occurred. That is, the number of card is already more than 3. So this is gone. And you have these numbers here. That these are the seven numbers. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Out of these seven numbers, what is the probability of getting an even number? One. 2, 3, 4. That is why my answer is 4 by 7. As you can clearly see, this expression is working here. Now, sometimes you won't be able to have a logical idea about the question. Then the formula works. Otherwise, try to achieve 
try to understand the question more logically. So suppose you are understanding this point over here guys. Let's move on to a difficult question now. So this question says that David has a question bank consisting of 300 easy type x questions, 200 difficult type x questions, 500 easy type y and 400 difficult type y questions. If the question is selected at random from the question bank, now if you have to identify the event. What is the probability that it will be an easy question? So let's say this is event A, given that, that it is the type y question that is event B. So uh, we have two events. So what is the probability of event A occurring? That is what is the probability that it is an easy question? So how many easy questions are there? There are 300 easy questions here and then there are 500 easy questions here. So the total number of easy questions are 300 plus 500 that is 800. And what is the total number of questions? So the total number of questions would be 300, 200 which is 500 and 500, 400 that is 900, uh, you know, sorry, 900. Uh, that would be equal to 1300, right? So the total number of questions are 1300. So the probability that event A occurs would be 800 divided by 1300, which is 8 by 13. And what is the probability uh, such that event B occurs? So the probability of event B occurring is because it's a type Y question. So how many type Y questions are there? The total of 900 type Y questions. And uh, out of these 900 type Y questions, uh, what is the probability divided by total? That is 1300. So that is 9 by 13. And what is the probability that event A occurs and event B occurs? So how many questions are there which are easy and which are type Y? That is 500. So that is going to be equal to 500 divided by 1300, which would be 5 by 13. And the question is asking what is the probability that it would be an easy question that probability that event A occurs such that it is a type by question that B has already occurred. So that would be equal to probability of both the events occurring together divided by the probability of event B occurring because this is now the sample space. So this is going to be probability of A intersection B which is equal to 5 by 13 divided by the probability of B which would be equal to 9 by 13 and we have our answer as 5 by 9. So I suppose you are understanding this point over here guys. Pretty easy question because it's it's very very easy when you un, you know approach it like this and uh, make starting from here only we're gonna be uh, you know doing a lot more in the future videos when it comes to conditional probability. So this would be about this video, guys. Thank you very much for watching this video. Just make sure that you explore more about us on perfect-scores.com. Uh, you can also register for the forum there, free of cost, and you know you can ask me questions. Any question that you have, you can post there and uh, you can also throw us your valuable like at facebook.com slash perfect scores, right? So if you have any feedback about this video or any other thing, you want to privately contact me, that will be perfectscores89 at gmail.com. So this would be about this video, guys. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you in the next one.